Hi guys, uh, welcome back to Kasha's Book Club after our extended break. We took a couple of weeks, uh, actually a few weeks off um, since the last one when we uh, finished off with the Agatha Christie's Poirot series. And um, I had to take a bit of a break because it was um, supposed to start the end of the financial year. And uh, so things got a bit busy at work and uh, hopefully we're sort of in a decent place. And uh, yeah, we'll be able to move forward into the new financial year with fun. So I'm really excited to be back. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm obviously had a bit of a hair change and stuff like that. So I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I hope you can hear me well down there. Um, so, yeah, so I thought I'd go a bit off topic to, today. And um, I'm not just going to review this one book on its own but just as a general as a series or a collection of stories just the general series itself so today i'm going to be talking about the return of sherlock holmes by sir arthur conan doyle now i picked this up as a bargain i picked this up and the adventures of sherlock holmes in a um uh what's it called in the book warehouse in notting hill gate many years ago and i don't think the book warehouse is there anymore actually um, closed down like lots of places in the high street, unfortunately. So The Return of Sherlock Holmes, I'd never read it before. And the first time I read it, I just had to sort of, mm, I didn't understand it so much. Started reading the first uh, story, and I didn't even realise that it was a collection of short stories. Um, read it, and then um, immediately sort of like dove in to Sherlock's remarkable nature. So for those of you who don't know, Sherlock Holmes has this... This, uh, this art, he's a master of deduction, so he will notice things that other people won't notice. Well, they'll notice it, but he'll take note of it. Um, so, for instance, if someone is wheezy or short of breath, he will dedu deduce from that 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 person has asthma. Uh, if someone has legal papers or their shirt's a bit nicely pressed or whatever it is, he'll know that they work in a certain profession. And he boasts in uh, one of the stories that he has the ability to tell people on the tube, on the underground at the time, uh, what it was, sort of just the Metropolitan Line actually, uh, what, they, what they do for a living. So he's very clever. I'm sure you will know about Sherlock Holmes um, because he's been made into lots of movies and uh, there's also been a teledrama production. Um, I think it was on ITV some time ago, but you can probably watch a few of them on YouTube as well. It's with a guy called Brett something. Um, he's a bloke who looks exactly like I imagine Sherlock Holmes would, um, set in fairly olden days, um, and it's pretty cool. So those of you who don't know, right, okay, so I read this, didn't realise that this was a sequel, um, and it was relevant that I read the prequel because, uh, sorry, because if I hadn't read the prequel I wouldn't have known what was going on. But I started reading this, started really enjoying the stories, finished it all off to the end, and then I read the prequel, which was The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. I had them both at the same time and then I started reading that and then it made a lot of sense a lot of the stuff in here made sense after that Sherlock Holmes is this uh, very clever man who's uh, in the art of private detection uh, consultant de detecting um, consulted by government dignitaries and nobilities diplomats um, also monarchs as well yes the 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 Prince of Bohemia the King of Bohemia uh, has to consult Sherlock on a on a domestic matter in one of them. If you watch that. Um, so yeah, and uh, a production team. Can we just shut the door, please, if you don't mind? Thank you. And <laughs> I, 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 uh, because of the huge success of Catcher's Book Club, I've been able to recruit a production team as well now who advise me on my uh, on my videos. Anyways, back to back to. Uh, Thank you. That's uh, yeah. So uh, they're camera shy though. Now, now back to uh, back to the books. Sherlock, clever man, consultant detective, art of everything, and he's accompanied by a man called Watson, who was up in Afghanistan. He was a, a army doctor, and a traumatized bloke, and he's now here, and he kind of like looks for lodgings, and he lodges with Sherlock. They share rooms. By rooms, I mean I think they house share probably. Um, 
and Watson sits in and helps Sherlock on some of his cases. And it's as simple as that. The thing with Mr. Sherlock Holmes, um, which is very clever, is that he can tell the answer to a case or the description of the person who did it just by investigating, you know, by looking around, seeing the scene, and uh, he can tell by the imprints that are left on the gravel or the grass, uh, what type of boot or shoe size that person is. So it's very clever. It's more a boy's thing, which is what one person commented to me before. It's more like a, it was a more a boy's thing, you know, Sherlock Holmes. Uh, whereas Poirot was a bit more delicate, um, you know, which appealed to both genders. And um, I really enjoyed it, actually. I, I said there are a collection of short stories. There's The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. There's The Return of Sherlock Holmes, which comes next. There's also some other novellas. Um, the uh, the Baskerville Hounds or The Hounds of Baskerville. Um, and uh, A Study in Scarlet. And um, these are all out of copyright now, so you can go online, go to Project Gutenberg, uh, and just type it in and you can download them off the internet uh, for free. And um, if you don't mind reading it on a, on a device, you know, go for it on an e-book, on an e-reader. Um, or you could go and, you know, pick one of these up online um, or at your local bookstore or go to your local library, support public services. And yeah, it's really, really clever, actually. So I think... I would suggest that you read this and uh, really give it a go. I mean, this is one of those classics which which needs to be uh, given a chance, I think. Um, you know, we, we're sort of overlooking. And the reason why I wrote this is because I really enjoyed, as I mentioned in my previous sessions, uh, I really, really thoroughly enjoyed uh, Agatha Christie's Poirot. And so I thought maybe I was into detective books. And that's why I thought, you know what, let's try this. Um, and I really liked it, actually. I was pleasantly surprised. Yes, there are some similarities to Agatha Christie's Poirot, but where Poirot goes into more detail and it's a longer route to the answers, here it's a lot shorter, but it's more snappy as well, you know. Um, the style of writing is, is not archaic, it's a bit old-fashioned, you know, but it's still something that we can understand in the modern age. Um... You know, and Sherlock has this one enemy. Uh, I think if you go back to the first one, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, he has an overarching enemy, this man called Professor Moriarty, who's a very clever man, um, who's sort of running the criminal world in London. It's all set in London, by the way. And, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, just give it a go. After you've read the Poirot books, and there's about 50 of those, they should keep you occupied. Um, you know, Google it or go to your bookstore, go to your local library. Check out some of the Sherlock Holmes stories. They're very short. I mean, some of the stories are like maybe 10 pages, less than that, perhaps. You know, some they're a bit longer. Um, and they are clever. And there's a lot of dialogue as well. There's a lot of interplay. Um, and it is very clever the way he then eventually explains his answers. If you go to Baker Street, um, 221B Baker Street, there's actually a Sherlock Holmes museum there. Because that's where Sherlock Holmes' office is based, in number 221B Baker Street. And if you go to Baker Street Station, you'll actually see posters on uh, one of the platforms on the Jubilee line, I believe it is. And they're sort of posters with illustrations from here and a description of, you know, some of the stories, like a, almost a synopsis style or a sneak preview, uh, little cliffhangers to keep you going. Um, if you're ever passing by, have a look, check those out and then maybe pop into a bookstore nearby. Uh, there is a library in near Baker Street. I think it's... Um, in uh, Grosvenor Road or Gloucester Road, somewhere around there, um, Westminster Library. So, you know, there's a library there as well, so you, hopefully they should have it in stock. Um, okay, guys. Um, yeah, sorry, it's a, a bit off track. Um, it's not just one book that I'm gonna I'm talking about today. It's basically the, the, the general series of the Sherlock Holmes ones. And uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, do please subscribe to the channel um and uh yeah share the share the message happy reading guys ciao for now take care bye bye